a lot of times people will try to play games with you and they will risk playing these games because they don't really care whether or not to lose you or not. And if they did, they wouldn't be playing these kinds of games. They wouldn't be trying to pretend like they're somebody that they're not to get your affection or to get anything from you or to do anything with you. You, you don't need to lie to people or manipulate them in order to give value. You're not somebody that needs to do that kind of stuff. A lot of the times people will do this and a, and a lot of the times when you do this you'll be able to distinguish who exactly is who and who is exactly going to be able to be able to be relied upon and who's not going to be able to be relied upon. And sometimes the best way to know whether or not somebody is reliable or not is to keep silent, keep your mouth shut, keep your eyes open, and keep your mouth closed. When you keep your mouth closed, your eyes open, and your ears open, all of a sudden you start to see the world a lot differently. And your silence is gonna speak volumes to the people where you let your results speak for themselves. You see, your silence when you are actually somebody that keeps your mouth closed, you can actually be relied upon. You're a danger to a lot of these other people out here. Why? Because when you can keep your mouth closed on certain things and about certain things, but you know that you gotta keep your head on a swivel, that automatically makes you dangerous to a lot of people. And the reason that it makes you dangerous is because people know that you know something that they don't, more than likely. Even if you don't, even if you don't, right? Because even in the Bible it says that a foolish man that keeps his mouth closed is considered wise, right? I think that's in Proverbs. But it just goes to show that even if you know that sometimes it's just better to zip it, and keep your mouth closed, you're considered to be somebody that knows something. And that's also can be, that also can be something of a power play. A lot of the times people may not say that they're interested in power or influence or anything like that. I'm not gonna lie to you and pretend like I'm not, <laughs> okay? I, I'm interested in power and I'm interested in influence. But what I've learned is from a philosophical perspective, you have to let your will be one with your power. Your power comes from your will and your will comes from your power. And so when you have the fortitude of mind to really piece these two puzzle pieces together, what happens is you become somebody that is untamable. You become something more. Because at that point you're striving to live as an ideal or up to an ideal. And when you become an ideal or you become an idea, it's almost as if you completely become something that is not only unattainable, and I'm not saying you should be striving to become unattainable, I'm just saying that this is something that is a byproduct of this. You become unattainable and you become something that is neither, uh, it's like something you cannot fear something that you cannot love, you have to feel some way about it. Whether you respect it or whether you reject it, you've got to feel some way about it. And that's kind of where I'm not saying you should strive to be this, this kind of thing. I'm just saying that this is what happens when you do become an idea, when you do become something and you apply yourself more to something that is greater than you. And that's where true knowledge of power comes from. Does that mean that that's also where power comes from? No, it, power, power and your will are one, but you get your authority and you get your power from the Most High. You get your power from your relationship to the source of creation. You get your power from the density of your own consciousness, from being able to sit with who you are, accept it, and create accordingly because that's what we were really here to do we were here to build and create we're here to make something more we're not just here to just filly diddy daddle around and just hang out that's what a lot of people don't understand 
and a lot of people don't get this and silence is one of my greatest teachers and the reason that it's become one of my greatest teachers is because I get the most revelations, I get the most understanding, I get the most production of my soul in silence. And these people that can't keep silent, these people that don't know how to live a life that is just in accordance to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, these people don't understand what that's like because they don't know how to be with themselves in silence. There's a quote, a good quote that says something along the lines of a lot of the world's problems will be solved if people can just learn how to sit with themselves in silence for 10 minutes a day. And ultimately, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But people don't know how to do that. And people take your silence and your ability to work in silence as some kind of form of degradation or because it's not necessarily degeneracy they're they're just frightened by it a lot of these people are just frightened by the way that you're able to hold yourself and to carry yourself they don't get it you can walk with a head held high shoulders back chest out you're not cocky but you're confident and you're able to know what you're capable of you're competent and you know it but you're not going to bo be boastful about it this is what these people do not want more than anything they don't they don't want to see you become that person that is like this because if you did and if you are that kind of person you are automatically a threat to whoever it is that's in power at this moment like the shadow <laughs> the shadows of the realm <laughs> here in this realm here this beautiful this beautiful land you're just a threat to them because they can't control you it's not that you're a threat because you're threatening it's you're a threat because you live and abide in the truth and while doing so you live in a sense of freedom and a state of freedom haven't you ever seen all of these kinds of people at your workplace or out in the community whether it's at a coffee shop or a restaurant or a gym or whatever and there's just something meh about them. There's just something you can't quite put your finger on. And it's not like you're repulsed or anything. I mean, some people you get to get to be repulsed by certain people. But other people, it's just like they look attractive on the outside. But then you look in their eyes and there's just like there's something missing there. You don't really know what. But if you had a conversation with them, you probably would have been able to see through that. But it's almost like there's just something off about these kinds of people. There's something off about them. And it's because they're always going from person to person to place to place. And they're never really settling down with themselves. They're, they're always somewhere or doing or something or, or thinking about something. They're never in the present moment because they can't be. I genuinely believe, and I don't really need to believe this necessarily because I've experienced it. I genuinely know that you absolutely cannot live in the present moment if you cannot be with yourself in silence, comfortably and peacefully. This is not to say, and the reason for that is because your nervous system is probably on overload you're probably operating under some different kind of nervous system that is not the uh, parasympathetic or the sympathetic nervous system actually the sympathetic nervous system as a reminder is the fight or flight response most people operate under this sympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system is operating under digestion and calmness only about 80 percent of the people in the world how do I say this? 80% of the people in the world operate under the jurisdiction and the nervous system that they have with their sympathetic nervous system. They're always in fight or flight, 80% of the world. Only about 20% of the people in the population can actually have healthy attachments, a healthy nervous system, etc. And it's because our society is just completely degenerized 
the entire place. I mean, you look around and even the people that you'd think are pretty healthy or they look like they've got it going on on the outside, when you hear their problems and you talk about them with their problems, they have like a lot of relationship struggles that they don't want to address. You know, they keep pushing it under the rug. And I'm not saying this is everybody, but I'm saying it is a lot. You know, they've got a lot of relationship issues that they don't address. They've got uh, financial issues that they don't address. They pretend to like have more money than they really do. I'm not somebody that's going to sit here and, and claim to have what I don't have. I am always 100% authentic and I'm very transparent. And you know, it's very strange. It's a very strange world that we live in where your status in the Western society, at least, and probably throughout the world, but especially in the West, it's almost like your status determines your power. But that's not the way the universe works. That's not the way the most high works. You see, I've met people that have way more status, quote unquote, than me. And my spirit was way stronger than theirs. And it's not to say like, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm just a way better than them. It's no, I was just genuinely more with myself. And because I'm more with myself, because I'm more attuned to my own spirit, it's like they're playing a guitar that is completely out of tune, but it looks incredible. I mean, it's a super nice guitar. It's a beautiful guitar. Let's say it's a Les Paul like a like a <laughs> like it's a les paul it's something that you'd see jimmy page playing from led zeppelin something you'd see like that meanwhile i've got a nice little acoustic guitar maybe it's a 200 dollars guitar but it's nothing yeah it's nothing special but it sounds like it can play a melody and when i play it i can play the melody that's exactly what it's like and it's almost as if your silence is kind of just like that melody because you do prevent present not prevent you do present a vibe to the world like people talk about vibes and energy and auras right and that's it's definitely a thing that you do have energy like you are made of energy <laughs> that uh, how how else does when you eat a banana like how does that banana get digested exactly well it's a form of energy going into your body and it takes energy to to digest it you're you're made of energy it's we just call it biological or neurological or any specific kind of practical name you're made of energy and so practically speaking knowing and understanding that you're made of energy when you are silent you are playing that instrument just by being who you are and you're presenting a certain melody in a certain frame of a mind and a frame of understanding and a certain, I would say, ethereal understanding of something more that other people just don't get. It's because they may have a nice looking guitar, but it's out of tune and they don't know how to play it because they're always trying to like go through different things. They're always trying to learn different things, but they're actually never applying anything. Whereas you, there's a saying also in martial arts by Bruce Lee, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. He said, I fear the man that practices one kick a thousand times than the man that practices 1,000 kicks one time. Why? Because you can perfect that one technique. You can perfect it. And that's what you're going to be able to do when you're actually operating in silence and you're actually operating under your own jurisdiction because you're operating under not just your own jurisdiction, but because you're operating from a place of actually trying to better yourself, you send off a certain kind of energy to the world. You send out a broadcast to the world. So I hope this message was in some ways relatable or inspirational or insightful to some degree. I do want to appreciate everybody that's been joining the Regal Change Academy. And if you do want to join the Regal Change Academy, we have the paid community of about 145 people right now in the school program. School is an all-in-one course and community platform where we get together twice a week. We have Bible studies and then we have a regular call. We've also got some other uh, classes going on as well. 
in there. And then in the free Discord, you also have a bunch of different kinds of resources in there, but you don't have access to the calls and such. And again, I'm very transparent about this. And, you know, we're actually trying to help people grow closer to the Most High, strengthen healthy relationships, build people's brand and purpose, etc. in these in these uh, platforms. And I also want to give a shout out to everybody that's been moving from the YouTube platform over to the X and the Rumble platform. I do appreciate your guys' support during this time. And with all that being said, peace be with you all. Till next time.